Hi, Carolyn here from Absolute Care Health Clinic. Uh, I'm a trichologist and what I'm going to show you is a uh, method of documenting results. We use our uh, scope sessions uh, to capture microscopic images of the scalp and the problems of the scalp or hair growth before we do any treatment and then we recreate the same pathways um, at the end. So we're just going to take you through um, just some of the methods that I use. You'll see how I'm capturing and uh, yeah, it's just a bit of um, interesting things to see. So we'll start by measuring. So I'm going to have a measure. Thank you. And uh, I'm choosing a pathway five centimetres up from the nape. So I go five centimetres up, I mark, and then we go in from the hairline. And I sort of want to go in the middle of the terminal area, so I'm choosing five centimetres, seven centimetres, nine, eleven, and thirteen centimetres. And then we go in, it's a bit difficult on short hair to tell you the truth, but we go in and we find our marks. There it is in there. And then we're going to capture the image. So I'm watching what I'm doing on the screen. Turn that around. Okay, so I can see there it's our terminal area and some of our terminal hairs aren't growing properly. And take our second image. So for each sequence, I generally do between three and five images. So overall a scope session is about 50 images in total. And we do some hair bulb work as well. So I'm just reaching my fourth image. And my final image, I actually go and I look beneath the surface of the scalp. So I'm looking at my at the dermis. So we can see the capillaries and all sorts of things. There's also some translucent hairs there. I'm just going to move into our next pathway. Right, so we're in our second pathway, which is terminal 10 centimetres up from 7, 9, 11, 15. So it's five locations again. Go in and find them. And we're just going to capture again. So I'm going to do epidermis for the first ones. So that's one. That's our second one. Oh, we've got an empty follicle in that frame. It could just be part of the hair cycle. That's three. And our last one, we'll make our dermis again. Okay, so the capillaries aren't quite as red there. Okay, I'm going to move into our diagonal area. Okay, just moving into the recession. Now we know, because we've done a hair health check, that we've actually got vellus hairs here. So we are actually addressing some of these shrinking hairs. So we're trying to get our image pathway right on the hairline. So doing it from the bridge of the nose, and we're going to go in and mark. And we're going to mark in at 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And I'm going to go back 13, so there's 6 in that sequence. And I also mark whether I'm going to go to the left of the mark or to the right of the mark. So in this circumstance, we're going to go to the right of the mark because we want to go in on that hairline, which we can see there. Okay, so six images to get. See, it's not quite so bad there. I've just got a few bellies. 
else is happening in there. And lucky last. Okay, not so flattering here. We're going through the front, measuring from the bridge of the nose. So I go in 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, so generally 5, and I'm going to go straight through to what I call my crown or top, which will be 13, 14, 15, and 16. Now I've got someone marking down my measurements there, and I'm going to take all of my images to the right of the mark. So let's get our microscope. Follicles. Is, uh, this is the typical area of male pattern thing. It starts to uh, recede through the hairline and then the hair back here. So my second image coming up is actually a bit thicker, which is good. A few little shrinking hairs there, but not many at all. So this particular case is definitely more so the recession and right on the front hairline, but it's always good to capture this other image back here, because we want to make sure that DHT doesn't go back any further. So we'll stop that there, we'll come back and... Okay, we've taken all of our um, 60 times magnification images. Now another thing I like to do is check the hair bowl. So find when you're doing uh, treatment for any type of hair loss, the bowl resistance um, changes and the shape and size of the hair bowl is different as well. So we're going to actually extract some hairs very, very gently and carefully and we're going to look at them under a um, much higher magnification. So we'll go in and, and do our work. I'll just demonstrate that I'm not going to hurt my client. So very gently and I can tell that that um, had no resistance and it's a vellus hair. So we're going to mount this on our slide and we'll show you what it looks like under the microscope. Okay, so we've just separated a few hairs from the scalp. We're looking for the resistance of the bulb and if you look on the screen here, what we have is a um, vellus hair, so we don't have much of a hair bulb, and we can see that it's a very small hair. So what I'm going to do is move this around on my screen, so we can see next to it we actually have a um, hair that is growing properly, or it's got some broken uh, cortex in there, and we've got another one. Yeah, so this is our normal diameter, so that way we can tell when we've got a little hair like this that it's definitely not growing properly. Um, let's see what else we can find. There's another one there. We've got a shaft disturbance happening in here, and you can see the hair's thicker here than what it is there. So microscopic work tells us a lot more about the hair than what we can see from when we've laid it underneath the scalp. There's some sharp disturbances, some thinner hairs that you can see there, bellus hairs, and what we expect to see. It's a broken bulb. Yeah, what we expect to see um, at the end when we recreate the um, microscopic session is uh, a good result, some increased shaft diameter and uh, yeah, more hairs. So it's a very good way of uh, gauging uh, any hair loss treatment or hair thinning program. So hope you found that interesting.